Hi, I'm Kronos, with a walkthrough of how to create your own assets on the BitShares blockchain. BitShares offers a powerful platform for creating your very own tokens. They're called user-issued assets, and it gives you a huge amount of control over exactly how they work. For example, you could set up a specific list of accounts that are allowed to own your token, or you can take that right away and allow anyone to own it. You can even say that you have to personally authorize every transfer of the token, or you can say anyone can own it and trade it freely on the decentralized exchange. It's all up to you. In this video, we'll simply walk through how to create a token and set those permissions in the web wallet. Let's get started. Here we are in the BitShares web wallet, but you can actually see in the URL that we're connected to the BitShares test network. That's because creating a user-issued asset on the BitShares blockchain costs a little bit more in fees than a simple transfer would, and I don't want to spend those fees today because we're just making a demonstration video. You can connect to this test network if you want to play around with creating your own assets without paying the fees on the live network. To create your own asset, you'll click the Account tab in the upper left to bring up your user account page. Then, in the left navigation, you'll see the Advanced Features section, and you'll find Assets there. This brings up a list of the user-issued assets that you've already created. Of course, it's blank because I haven't created any, so let's click the Create Asset button. Here's the form that you'd fill out to create a new asset. The symbol is the shortest name that you would use for your asset. The BitShares core token symbol is BTS, so it's going to be very short. Let's use Kron, short for Kronos, which is going to be my own personal asset. The maximum supply is not the starting supply of the coin. It's simply the most that the coin can ever have is its maximum. So even though the default here is pretty high at 100,000, let's move this up a bit. Um, how about a billion? Because there's really no reason that you wouldn't want a very large maximum supply. When the coin is first issued, the supply is going to be zero, and I'll walk you through how to issue that for the first time. So this maximum is simply a limiter on that, and we don't want to be limited, so let's set that to a billion. Number of decimal points, four, that seems reasonable to me. The smart coin is an interesting BitShares feature that you probably want to leave off on your asset. BitShares smart coins are assets that track the value of something in the outside world. For example, BitUSD tracks the value of the US dollar. If you want to create your own asset that also tracks the value of something outside by using price fees, it's a little bit more complicated. We're not going to cover that in this video, but that's where you would turn on smart coin here. For your asset, you're probably going to want this off. The core exchange rate is discussing the fee pool, which people can use to pay fees with your asset. When you pay the fee to create your asset for the first time, half of that goes into a fee pool, which is very useful. That means that if you give away your token to someone who's new to BitShare, so they don't have any of the core token BTS, they can still use that token you've given them to pay the fees to transfer that token around. That means you don't actually have to buy any BTS to get started as long as this fee pool has your own token in it. If this is confusing, don't worry about it. Just leave the exchange rate as one to one and think of your token as worth about one BTS when it comes to fees. Now, before we create the asset, let's scroll up to the top here because there's a few other important tabs to click. Under description, we can add more information about the asset. The description is meant to be a little bit longer, maybe a whole paragraph that describes the purpose of the asset. So let's fill this out. This is a test token for demonstration purposes. And then the short name can be at most 32 characters. So it's something that's in between the description and the asset. Under primary settings, you see the asset symbol. So it's going to be longer than the symbol, but it's shorter than the description. The preferred market pairing is the asset that this token will be traded against primarily. And I would recommend setting that to BTS, or I guess in this case we're on the test network, so it's called test. But if you're doing this on the live network, you would use BTS, which is the core BitShares token. Now there's two more tabs here that I definitely want to highlight, permissions and flags. They're actually kind of working in parallel. Here's how they work. Permissions give you the ability to do specific things with the asset, and they have to be on in order to give you that ability. But the flags also correspond with those same abilities, and they also have to be on. The difference is the permissions are set at the beginning when the asset is created. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say you want to really have a strong control over your asset, so you want the ability to transfer the asset back to you at any time. In that case, you would leave this permission on. 
Let's make it the only permission that's on by turning these others off. Now when we go to the flag section, you can see the flag for that same permission. This can be turned on or off at any time during the lifetime of the asset. So I could start with this off, and then a few months later turn it on and issue the asset back to myself, taking it from the other accounts. Now if I don't want that to be possible, I would turn this permission off. I've jumped back to the permissions tab and I'm turning this off. Now people who use my token know that I will never have that permission. So if you want to keep an option open, you would turn it on in the permission section here. And if you want to make sure that can never happen so that the users of your token can trust that you don't have that power, then you would turn it off. In this case, I'll just leave all the switches off and then click create asset. Next, we'll need to type in the wallet password. And here is the transaction that is going to create my user issued asset. We can take a quick look here to confirm the settings that I've put in, but this basically summarizes what I've set in these forms. So there's my maximum supply of 1 billion. You can see the four decimal points that we chose as precision. That's the decimal points, four decimal points. There's my symbol, cron, and then the description has the short name, the long description, the market, all this stuff that we set in those forms are filled out here, so we can go ahead and click confirm. One thing you notice under the fee is it's a relatively large fee. Now we're on the test network, so this isn't costing me anything, but this is going to be a significant amount of BTS. At the time of this recording, it's about $30 worth of BTS. So you do want to have a purpose for your asset. Don't just create these willy-nilly, but really think about what you're going to do with your asset, because when you create it, that's a big deal. When we click confirm, the transaction is broadcasting and confirmed. BitShares is so quick and easy. We'll click close and go back to the overview. Now, I need to tell you, even though we created the asset, it still doesn't exist. Remember, our maximum supply was a billion. Our actual supply is still zero. And we need to wait until the asset is confirmed on the network by a majority of witnesses. So you can see it's still pending three blocks here. Here's my transaction where I created the asset and it's waiting for just a few more blocks. Once that's done, it's going to appear in my assets tab. Two more blocks. At this time, blocks come out every three seconds, so it's not going to take long for that to be confirmed. Once that's done, we're going to be able to issue the asset for the first time. And this is something you might overlook, issuing the asset. But if you don't do it, then none of it exists. So that's, that might catch you the first time you're doing this. So now that that's been confirmed, let's click Assets. We wait a moment, and the new asset that we've created will show up here on the screen. There it is. There's my symbol, cron, and you can see the button, Issue Asset. This is that last step that you'll need to take in order to actually give yourself some of your new token. So I can issue this to any account. Of course, I'm going to issue it to myself, which is Kronos Demo 1. I can choose how much to issue. This is where that 1 billion limit comes into play. I can't issue myself more than a billion. That's okay with me. I'll just issue 10,000. And I can write myself a memo. Hello, Kronos. I think the memo is kind of silly in this case. But if I'm issuing it to another user account, then this memo will be delivered to them so that they can receive a message saying, you know, I'm getting this asset from this other person, and here's the message they're including. Could be a thank you note, for example. I've clicked issue. I need to confirm this transaction. You can see this fee is very, very small, just a tenth of one uh, core token. So this is like a transfer in a sense that the fee is very small. Click confirm. We've already unlocked the wallet, so we don't have to do that again. And now that's been confirmed. So now let's jump back to the overview one last time and take a look at that new asset. Look at that. There's my 10,000 cron. So now that that's done, I now have that asset for the first time. That's all it takes to create and issue a user-issued asset on the BitShares blockchain. From here, you can go ahead and send your asset to the people who you want to own it, or even offer it for trade on the decentralized exchange. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below the video. I'm Kronos. Thanks for watching.